Hi everybody, it's Charles with an entry for the 1st of May, 2014. Um, it was a Thursday. Um, basically, tonight I hung out with some friends and I got my first request for video probably by the only person that actually steadily watches my videos. So I'm pretty much obligated to do it. Um, basically, her request was what would happen or what would my plan be if I were to wake up, you know, and um, I was the only, or me and two other friends, or two other friends and I were the only three people left on Earth. Well, seemingly the only three people left on Earth. So basically the premise is, is that if that I, like we all, you know, hang out one night and then we fucking, you know, fall asleep watching TV or something, and then we wake up, you know, and then fucking, you know, there's nobody outside, we don't know what happened, you know, there's nobody in the streets, you know, like fucking, you know, all of the, the live stations on TV or, you know, offline, like what would our thought processes be and like what would our plans be and shit like that. Um, so basically, <laughs> the, um, obviously my first priority would be to, you know, try and figure out what happened without, you know, putting myself in danger. You know, so in other words, I'm going to, you know, take a peek outside and all of that shit. And I'm going to try and, you know, maybe walk, sneak around the neighborhood and everything, but I'm not going to fucking, you know, just go jauntily for a walk or something. Because if it turns out that, you know, if we've, you know, like been invaded by an army or something. I'm not, I don't want to get captured or I don't want to get killed myself. Or if there's something like a fucking a mass outbreak or some kind of disease or something, I don't want to be exposed to the carriers. Or if there's, you know, a big thing now is zombie invasion. So if there's a zombie invasion, obviously I don't want to get eaten. You know, but my thoughts are that if, you know, it's a zombie invasion, it's not going to happen that quickly. You know, zombie invasions, they're not quick, they're, you know, it's kind of like a zombie invasion can sweep across the nation, but it doesn't happen quickly. You know, it's not like one day you wake up and fucking everybody's dead, it's like, you know, like, like I was thinking like, or I brought up, you know, the Dawn of the Dead remake, the beginning of that, where, you know, the woman wakes up and then she steps outside and like everything crazy is going on outside. You know, fucking, you know, a lot of different things are going on outside, you know. You know, people are panicking in the streets, you know, neighbors are trying to flee, you know, zombies are killing, you know, people that are just out in the middle of the streets and stuff like that. So, the zombie invasion doesn't really fit the premise. Um, so, I mean, obviously, I would take, you know, different tactics if there was a zombie invasion, you know. Obviously when there's a zombie invasion, you know, your main goals are, you know, supplies, weapons, supplies meaning like food, you know, clothing, you know, parachute, you know, things that you actually need, um, you know, mostly food, water, you know, if you need, you know, clothing, gear, stuff like that. Um, obviously, you know, weapons, you know, you want a melee weapon, a melee weapon, however you pronounce that, you know, so you want to get like a, you know, you want, I'd probably go for some kind of a sword, because a sword is obviously good for cutting off heads. You know, some people like bats and hammers, but you know, those are, those are not one-shot kills, those are, you know, fucking, you know, you beat them on the ground, and then you got to repeatedly bash their head in. Whereas if a sword is a quick decapitation, or you could, you know, scalp them really quickly in order to kill them. Um, so basically those are, those are not, you know, guns, but they're, they're, you know, one-shot kills. And obviously, you know, they, melee weapons allow you to approach, you know, quieter. So if, you know, there's just one zombie, you don't want to, you know, shoot him. Because a, a gunshot is, you know, loud and it draws other zombies. So if you can take him out with, like, some kind of a sword. Because then if it's, if you try and go, like, fucking dagger or something like that, you know then you have to get too close to him, he's apt to, you know, if you're trying to sneak up on him and you try and use, like, some kind of a sword to stab him in the eye or something like that, 
He's apt to notice you at the last minute and bite you, and then you're infected and your life is over. Whereas a sword, you have to get moderately close, but you know, you can still do it at a distance, so you can be kind of out of his like quick snapping jaws and so. And like I said, they're a lot quieter. It's good for stealth work. So that's why I recommend a melee weapon. Plus, if you get cornered, you know, you run out of bullets, you know, a sword never runs out. You know, so you can still use something like that. Um, obviously, guns are important, you know, if you get, you know, if there's a shitload of them, you know, it's better to take them out at a distance rather than letting them get on top of you because then, you know, if you get overwhelmed, you know, you're pretty much a goner. Um, so yeah, I mean, basically, I don't know, I, I'm not like a real gun nut. I mean, I know like the basics of guns from like movies and, you know, books and TV and stuff. So, I mean, obviously, people like machine guns because they have an extremely rapid rate of fire. But, um, you know, they're not accurate. So they throw a lot of bullets in a specific direction, but they're not really like, you know, they're not on target. So they're good at, you know, wiping out huge crowds. But, you know, if you're trying to, you know, kill the, the individual zombies by performing any type of a headshot or something, you know, they're not really effective. Um, plus the fact in, you know, a lot of machine guns and stuff like that, there's a lot of recoil, which kind of makes it hard to control. So, you know, for me, it might be a little bit easier because I'm a bigger dude. But if, you know, some of my friends are a little bit smaller, and, you know, so it might be hard for them to control, you know, such a, a big weapon that has a lot of recoil. Plus, you know, you go through ammunition pretty quickly because you just fucking, you're firing shit in a specific direction. You're not really making any target shots. Um, you know, an assault rifle, I think it would be better because, you know, you can still pump out rounds. But from what I know, I mean, obviously, like I said, I'm, I'm excuse me, I'm not a gun guy. I'm not extremely knowledgeable about them, but they seem to be more accurate, you know. So, um, obviously, I would like a shotgun, you know, because it's good for close encounters. You know, if a couple of them sneak up on you and you don't notice until the last minute, you know, a shotgun is just a quick, it's a quick killer. You know, you just turn around and then you fire. You don't have to be that accurate because there's enough, you know, there's enough buckshot or whatever it is, force that, you know, will push them back or hopefully, like, blow up their head or something like that. Um, you know... A rifle is good if you can put a scope on it. It allows for really long distance kills. So you don't even have to be in the vicinity, you know, to get your, to kill them, you know. Obviously a handgun is good for close encounters, you know. But um, you don't have, it, it doesn't provide the power. So it would be a good backup weapon. Um, so yeah, I mean, preferably I would have, you know, an assault rifle, you know, I mean, I would obviously like to have all of the weapons that I could with as much ammo as I could, but, um, you know, my, my primary weapon would probably be some sort of an assault rifle. My secondary or my backup weapon would probably be a shotgun and my last minute weapon or my last resort weapon would probably be some kind of a small handgun. Um, yeah, I mean, like something like a Magnum, which is, it's, it's a handgun, it's, but it's extremely powerful. I mean, that, from what I know, you know, they don't hold clips, they're more like, you know, I think like six shots or less from every, you know, Magnum or Desert, e Desert Eagle weapon that I've seen. They don't hold that many bullets, so I mean, you know, they're powerful, but it's, they're designed more to like, you shoot something once, like if you shoot a human with a magnum, it's, the person stays down because it destroys them. But zombies, obviously, they don't feel pain, so, you know, maybe a couple of shots from a magnum will, you know, knock or take them out. So you need, you know, you need a lot more ammo in a specific clip. So even though they're extremely powerful, you know, sometimes larger magazine size is, you know, good. <laughs> um, under supplies, I mean, obviously you want like a, you want, you know, a well-rounded 
you know, area of supplies, you know, you want, you know, penicillin, you know, cough medicine, you know, aspirin, bandages, you know, antiseptic, you know, pretty much as much as you can. I mean, when it comes to medicine, you know, you never know when missing that one thing is going to lead to life or death. You know, I remember the stand where, um, the movie The Stand, where one of the guys gets hurt. And, you know, and he almost dies because he catches the flu. And, you know, the flu might not seem like, the normal flu might not seem like, you know, that big of a deal to any of us. But, you know, if you catch that shit and you don't have any way to cure it, and, you know, you just continuously get worse and worse and worse, I mean, that could kill you. You know, the common cold could kill you. You know, just shit like that. So you need to be well prepared in terms of medicine. Um, that'll lead me to a different segue about, you know, staying put, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when it comes to food and water, obviously you you need water that's transportable. You know, get some of those, you know, I don't know what they're called, the tablets that make, you know, that make dirty water cleaner. <laughs> I can't remember what they're called, but, you know, they kill a lot of the diseases and, you know, polluted or dirty water and those are obviously necessary because you know you're not always going to be able to you know drink clean water or to find clean water um, especially you know as time goes on and you know shit gets more like like the stores start to get you know the supplies in stores start to rot and shit like that and, you know animals start to you know breach you know human civilization and they start invading stores you know ripping things apart or making nests in stores or, you know, plastic starts falling apart and, you know, shit like that. So, um, like, obviously there's, you know, like I was reading a science fiction book that talks about, you know, the end of the world. And um, people were obviously like, we need to create stockpiles and shit like that. And then other people were like, yeah, but that's good for, you know, it's good for the here and now. But, you know, we have to think about years from now. We have to think about fucking, you know, if we don't learn about farming and shit like that, and we don't, you know, secure the materials that we're going to need, then, you know, we're eventually going to die. Maybe not this year, but maybe next year, or the years to come, or five, or maybe ten years. Because we have to keep, you know, we have to keep, you know, the grains, and we have to keep the machinery working like that, and we have to keep the seeds and everything like that. We have to keep that shit in preparation for the years to come. You know, your first idea is just like fucking, you know, create some sort of a bunker and get like a shitload of canned food. But then what happens in fucking, you know, a year when all the other canned food is rotted through or, and then fucking you finished your surplus and then you go out looking for other food, what are you going to find? I mean, maybe if you're lucky, you'll find some berries or some shit like that, or you'll kill some animals. But I mean, fucking, Maybe you're, you can't, maybe there are no animals in your area anymore. Maybe they all fucking ran away or they died. And then you're fucking, you're stuck, you know, you're stuck trying to, to hunt on an empty stomach. You know, so you're getting weaker and weaker and weaker, but you're getting more desperate for food. So, I mean, that's kind of not a good plan. That's a very short-sighted temporary solution. Um, but then obviously, you know, you need some way to survive the initial, you know, outbreak or whatever the fuck it is. So, you know, maybe, maybe weighing low for a little while is a good idea while fucking, you know, the initial war is waged with fucking the zombies or the aliens or whatever. So it is a good idea to, you know, to get what you need and then to lie low for a little while while fucking, you know, people loot stores, fucking people, you know, kill people randomly just for the hell of it, you know, there's gang wars and shit like that. So it, it's good to lie low just for that shit. I mean, obviously, you know, try and form like some kind of a group, you know, but then fucking lie low. I mean, you know, if you lie low initially, then you might come out and you're on your own and fucking then somebody might just pick you off, you know. <laughs> 
but I mean, if you if you have like like if I in my initial premise, if I wake up and I have my two friends, you know, once we get some you know stockpiles, or maybe they bring in you know some of their family, then we can you know we get you know some supplies and then we lay low and then we wait it out for a little while while fucking shit goes to hell outside and we do our best you know just to stay alive initially um i mean obviously that depends how long we we lay low depends upon what the um what the cause of it is and like fucking what you know what the um, what the outside situation looks like. I mean, it also depends upon if you know if it's a zombie invasion and zombies like starve to death or something like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, zombie bodies have to decay eventually, right? Like the, in the movie twenty, what was it, twenty eight days later? Eventually, they reached a point far enough out of the city where the you know the zombies that were chasing after them, you know, eventually got too weak to continue and they weren't able to reach them because they were fucking, you know, they were on foot and they hadn't eaten in such a long time that their bodies eventually just fucking, you know, crumbled underneath them and they fucking, you know, were stuck in place. They were just like fucking, you know, hungry corpses that just couldn't move because their bodies had decayed so much. So the people were in essence, you know, you know, they were eventually free, like scot free from they didn't have to worry about the zombies anymore because the zombies can no longer move. Obviously, you can still get bitten by like something laying on the ground, but if you're, you really, you don't have to be as careful because, you know, they're not going to come running out of the woods anymore because they can't move. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that depends upon how, you know, it depends upon the individual, a lot of this depends upon the individual situation. Um, that's just one of the examples. How long you're going to lay low? Um, another thing that I looked at is, or that I read about in the book, is that you know, everybody's general idea is to you know they want to save their family and their friends, obviously. Um, but the problem with the problem with that is that you know, unfortunately, in the world, there's a lot of dead weight, <laughs> you know. Like, I've, in the movie The Stand and some other science fiction books I've read, you know, people want to form communities and shit like that. You know, people need to, they need to bring humanity back from the brink. But unfortunately, the struggle to survive is so tough that, you know, you want, you want to bring in, you know, your, your four friends, but maybe, you know, your friends don't have any skills that they can use in the community. I mean, a lot of times... It's good to have some people that are just like, you know, an extra set of hands to help, you know, carry shit or, you know, maybe an extra gun at your back, you know, to fucking to watch that corner while you fucking go arm deep and try and fucking root for supplies. But there are only so many of those slotted positions available. So obviously the most important people of the community are going to be fucking, you know, the, the probably the ex-soldiers who can who know how to handle weapons, but they can also fucking teach tactics and, you know, weapons and shit like that to other people. Um, mechanics, engineers, builders, carpenters, you know, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, just people like that who can just fucking, you know, who are the essentials of rebuilding society. You know, if you have, you know, if you have a full community of people who are just like fucking, you know, retail workers, um, or people who don't have any, like, you know, community building skills. I mean, I shouldn't use retail workers because fucking, you know, a lot of us are the hardest working people you're going to meet. So fucking, you know, I mean, I, I've seen a lot of overweight, really overweight and like lazy fucking, you know, you know, office workers and shit like that. But then fucking retail workers, they got a lot of get up and go. So if I need help moving, I'm going to want fucking retail workers, you know, <laughs> because I'm just like, you know, I need help with like to move this shit. And they're just like, all right, dude, let's fucking get it started. Whereas if I'm like, yo, office workers, can you help me move? They're going to be like, well, that's a lot of weight fucking, you know, that couch looks pretty heavy. you know. So, so obviously you want people like there are a lot of smart, you know, people who don't have, unfortunately, like the fucking who don't have the work ethic, 
that a lot of you know dumber people have. So obviously when you pick a doctor or something, you need somebody who's fucking, you know, who's got the will and who's got the determination to survive and to help your community survive. You don't want to pick some lazy dude who just wants to fucking sit in his chair and tell other people what to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, we can't, you want to save everybody. Just like I, in one of the science fiction books I read, Lucifer's Hammer, it was about a comic that, a comet that, you know, hit the earth and, you know, caused a lot of flooding and environmental disasters. But basically they were talking, it was a book about like farmers and they were talking about like, pretty much it was like, dude, we're going to get a fucking shitload of people, you know, from the cities just coming up here trying to take our food and stuff like that. And they they were like fucking dude if they do that if we let them do that they're gonna fucking they're gonna kill us all because they're gonna eat us into starvation, you know. So unfortunately, some of them fucking made the hard choice and they were like, dude, we gotta kill these people. <laughs> I mean, which is fucking it's a horrible situation, but in 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 all actuality, it is kind of true because you have to make hard choices on who you allow in your community. Because you want to be very fucking, you know, liberal and PC and just let everybody in. But if you create, if you have that many mouths to feed and that many people who are, you know, leaning on your supplies and stuff, and everybody's not pulling their own weight, then unfortunately, you know, shit's just going to get a lot harder if you even fucking, you know, have the ability to survive. You know, if you try, unfortunately, people have to... People have to be willing to work and pulling their own weight. And if there's anybody that doesn't, who's not willing to do that, then fucking they're not, you know, they're going to be a detriment to your community. I mean, obviously, fucking, you have to weigh that. Like, you have to fucking, you know, maybe this old lady, you know, she has knowledge. You know, she can't fucking, you know, haul boxes or fucking fight off, you know, bandits or zombies, but she has knowledge that you can use. So, you know, maybe she's, she can stay in the community because you, that knowledge is desirable, even though she's fucking, you know, old and she's very, like, limited physically. Um, that being said, somebody might be a straight-up fucking moron, but, you know, he's big. He can fucking, you know, he can fight well and he can fucking, you know, carry a lot of shit, so he's good for, you know, fucking scouting parties and shit like that. Um, so it really depends. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to fucking make a generalization that, you know, women or men or fucking, you know, one specific race is better than another, one specific sex or anything like that. Um, because that's, you know, maybe men are more, you know, there are fucking women who are stronger than men. There are men who are stronger than women, you know, fucking. But, um, I mean, physically, I'm going to say it most you know, physically, men are designed to be, you know, the more physical of the sexes. Um, women, obviously, are designed, you know, more nurturing, more family-oriented and stuff. You know, obviously, they're the ones that give birth, so they have, you know, in my eyes, they have a, a deeper connection with children, you know, than, you know, than the men do. I mean... Obviously, a lot of us have really great fathers and shit like that. And maybe some of us have really great fathers and shitty mothers. Um, but, you know, if I, were, if I were to see two people, you know, just two random people, I would expect, in my mind, it's probably, you know, a lot of conditioning and stereotyping, but I would expect, you know, the mother to be closer to the child than, at least initially, than the father would than the father is, I should say, you know. That's just because those are, you know, society's norms. I mean, maybe it'll change one day, but fucking that's what it is right now. So if this, you know, premise were to happen fucking, you know, tomorrow, then fucking that's the way, you know, it would work. So fucking men, the men, but then I wouldn't fucking only put the men on the front line. You know, I think women are obviously good fighters. You know, there are a lot of women soldiers and, they, and there are a lot of women who could fucking easily beat my ass. So I'm not going to be like fucking, you know, men on the front line, fucking women, you know, support the men or some shit like that. Because there are a lot of women 
that fucking, you know, who can fucking, you know, who do the work, who fucking, you know, can handle themselves easily. No, so fucking, plus I think, you know, a good mix of men and women, you know, it adds more, like, it, it increases morale, it adds more unity, you know, fucking, I've read some, you know, science fiction novels where fucking, you know, men are the ones who fucking, you know, run a community and then they create, like, a harem of fucking women who just, like, fucking cater to their needs, and that's not the fucking the community I would want to run. Not because I don't think, not because I'm fucking, you know, I'm not sexist and I think women have what they are, what they, um, because women, because I don't think that women have a lot to offer, but because I think it would also increase morale. I mean, women fucking, women do have a lot to offer, but it also increases morale for fucking, you know, if they work side by side with men, you know, fucking, I think women, women have, a lot of women have a different way of thinking, you know, fucking, you know, that's why a lot of, that's why I think coupling works, because women perceive, you know, something some way, and men perceive something some way. I mean, obviously there's homosexuality and stuff like that, so I'm not going to argue that fucking, you know, men, men, and women, women can't work. But I think, you know, if, if women and men didn't work, we would have switched purely to men, men, and, you know, women, women, you know, long ass time ago. But, you know, women and men has worked. That's not to say that, you know, men, men, and women, and women won't, you know, work too, but I'm just saying that women and men has worked and it will continue to do so. Um, plus, you obviously, you need children <laughs> if you want to survive as a species, and, you know, there's no better way to do that than fucking women and men. But there's no other way to do that other than women and men. Um, so, yeah, what have I, um, basically, what, oh, yeah, um, for security, you obviously, like, fucking, you obviously, for, initially, you need to, you know, when it first happens, you need to collect the essentials so that you can lay low, and then, um, then after that, it's probably a good idea to keep on the move, try and find out what happened, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket because if fucking if a zombie sword swarm finds out that you and your family are hunkered down in one house, you know, you're pretty much done for because fucking unless you battle your way out, they're never gonna go away. They're just gonna fucking crawl at the windows and fucking wait you out and eventually you're gonna have to leave for food and shit like that. And fucking eventually, you know, or eventually you're gonna starve to death and then the fucking they win. So, you know, you have to keep mobile back then, you know, you have to be able to fucking, once you see a zombie swarm, swarming on your fucking, your, you know, your operation, you have to be able to move. Um, but I think that once, you know, once the initial swarm is over, you know, and you want to start building up the pieces, you have to pick somewhat of a defensible community or position, you know. You obviously need enough room to grow, so you want maybe like a small town or something like that, but, um, obviously, you want to stay out of cities because there are too many, you know, places to hide, you know. There's going to be a shitload of zombies there, obviously, because there are a shitload of people there. But you, um, you don't want, you know, the wide open country, you know, where it's, it's like one house per every 20 miles, because then fucking, you know, rooting for supplies and shit like that and going on, you know, food runs is just fucking, you know, a couple of, it's a, it's such a lengthy process, you know, and you're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to, you know, root through other houses for supplies and amenities if fucking the other house is like a, and, you know, a two day walk away or something like that, you know. Um, so you do have to keep kind of, that's why I suggest a small town, you know, you can root through other houses, but, you know, you know, there aren't going to be a shitload of other, you know, people there. Plus, you know, there's going to be fucking, each small town usually has some kind of a hospital or a clinic. So, you know, if you grab a bunch of medicine and then fucking, you know, you grab, you know, 20, 20 bandages and then fucking turns out you need 21, you can run to that, you know, hospital and get, or clinic and get more rather than if you need that extra one and it's fucking, you know, 
a two day hike away, you know, whoever is hurt is probably going to die because you don't have enough bandages and you didn't grab them enough. You didn't grab enough initially. So you have to think about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's obviously, obviously to, you know, really start up a community and settle down, you need to fucking, you know, you need to really find somewhere to hunker down, really set up defenses and shit like that. Um, obviously the defenses depend upon, you know, what kind of, scenario you have, like if it's fucking zombie invasion, alien, or zombie outbreak, alien invasion, fucking quarantine situation, whatever it is, um, but yeah, I mean, fucking, the, I, I was talking with my friends about this, and basically the thing, they're, <laughs> they're very, you know, they're emotional, compassionate people, so I don't think they're prepared about, like, how, you know, how kind of like, you know, tactically and, you know, like unemotional I'm looking at such a situation, you know, fucking, I'm all about, you know, pulling your own weight, you know, I can't, or we as a community can't afford to feed a bunch of people who just fucking sit back and wait for us to do all the hard work. And unfortunately, so some people are going to have to be fucking, you know, if you tell some people to work and you tell them, you know, hey, you got to pull your own weight and they continue not to do so, you, it's either, it's either fucking hanging on to one person and the whole community dies or, you know, sending that one person away and then fucking hopefully, you know, fucking, and then the rest of the community will survive. So obviously tough choices have to be made, really tough choices. And so, um, yeah, I mean, Obviously, you don't really know what your friends are capable of until shit hits the fan, you know what I'm saying? Like, you might have a friend, a lazy friend now, who's just like, fucking, yeah, I don't really like work. But fucking, so you can't really gauge that until fucking the life or death situation is upon you. Because who knows, they might just be like, holy shit, dude, fucking, you know, I might not like work, but I gotta fucking step up or else we're all gonna die and I'm not gonna fucking kill my friends. And then they might have fucking boundless energy and they might be fucking, you know, all about it because shit is at the fan and they know that they have to fucking change their lives. Or you might have people that are fucking hard workers and then, you know, fucking their family dies and then they just become, you know, useless grievers who just fucking, you know, hang there and it's just like, oh my god, my family's dead, what are we living for, you know? And all they do is sit there and just fucking complain and, you know, what's the point of this? Fucking, we're all gonna die anyways. And then so fucking maybe their, if their spirit, you know, gets, gets destroyed, maybe fucking, you know, the best person might just become the worst person. So you never know. Um, that being said, I can't really, I can't point to people and say, you know, they'd be good in a zombie outbreak. They'd be good in a zombie outbreak. Obviously, you, peep, you see people who are smart, who have a lot of common sense, who are hard workers, who are determined, and you're just like, I think that person would be good in a zombie outbreak, you know, fucking, they seem very flexible, you know, they seem very fucking able to adapt, and they seem like fucking they'd be, you know, up to make a lot of choice, hard choices, and, you know, fucking they, you know, they look at things with an open mind, and fucking they think outside of the box, and you think that, you know, fucking, you know, they'd be good in, in an outbreak because they have, you know, all the characteristics that you generally look for. Um, obviously, physical fitness would be a huge part of it because you need people, you need fucking, you know, physical rough people, you know, you don't need fucking, you know, people that, you know, I was watching this, this cop show today and there was this woman who was like, um, she was overweight and she was bedridden and it was just like, you know, she was, she was like, I wish I was dead, you know, what can I do? I'm, I'm useless. And the cop was just like, you know, come on, don't say that about yourself. But then like, like he got really real for a second. She was like, what can I do? And he was just like, you know, and then basically he was just like, oh, you're sick right now. We'll get you better. And then, you know, fucking, you know, you get out there and fucking then you'll, you know, lose weight and fucking, you know, <laughs> but it got really real for a second. And people like that who just, you know, like don't, don't have that, can't really, you know, I mean, obviously that's an extreme example, you know, people that are fucking bedridden or, I mean, there's only so, 
like so much of an example you can make out of them, but but people like that movie Baghead that I talked about the other day. Um, they um, the group of four people tried to you know to save themselves by walking to a fucking a highway, which is like I think it was like eleven miles away, and then fucking they were walking, and there were pretty much three skinny ones, and then one chubby one. And, you know, they were walking, and they were just like, they showed it kind of time elapsed. And there were just repeated clips of, like, the big one just fucking having chest pains. Next thing you know, he's fucking sweating. He's requiring a break. He's fucking got a Charlie horse, and all the other ones got to wait for him. And they're just fucking sitting there, and, you know, fucking, they're just like, they're looking at each other like, this dude's sewing us up. You know, this dude's hurting the group. And it's just, that's true, fucking, you can't. You can't have somebody who fucking hurts the group, you know, like that. You need people to be fucking... When you're a whole, you know... When it's all about the group and the species, you need fucking... You can't... You can't, you know, all die because one person is going, is, is holding you back, is knocking you down, you know, shit like that. That's why I don't... When somebody gets bitten, I don't understand the people that fucking, they try and hide that shit. I mean, that's obviously fucking a movie thing because, it, you know, it creates drama in the group. Oh my god, when is he gonna, like, turn? When is they, when are they gonna fucking realize that shit? But, I mean, if you get fucking bitten or something like that, you gotta fucking just come out with it. Be like, look, people, I'm bitten, you know, fucking. You know, I care for you all and all that shit and fucking, you know, all of that shit. But you gotta fucking come out with that shit. Because what if you fucking, I mean, they're, they're supposed to be your new family, your friend, right? So if you hide your, when you're bitten, you've got to realize eventually you're going to fucking turn. And what, do you want to kill three of your new family just because you're fucking, you're, you don't want to show people that you're bitten? I mean, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> just be fucking, just be an adult about it and come out with it and be like, look, people, I fucking, I've been bitten, I'm going to die soon, fucking... If you need me to be the bait or anything in a situation, you've got to fucking, you know, just let me know because I've been bitten. You know, obviously, you know, it's easy for me to just sit here and fucking talk big and be like, yeah, dude, fucking I'd face my own death fucking, you know, bravely and shit like that. But I mean, that's fucking, you know, that's what thinking about the community and fucking thinking about the species is about. It's no longer about yourself. It's about fucking, you know, the world, and it's about fucking the whole community, and it's about your friends and shit like that. So it's no longer just about you. I mean, fucking, if you realize that fucking you're gonna hold everybody back, you better change that shit, and if you can't change that shit, then maybe they're better off without you. I mean, those are cold, hard facts, but you need to be able to fucking, like I said, this whole thing is that you need to be able to pull your own weight and you need to be able to bring something positive to the group. I mean, obviously, a major negative that everybody brings to the group is that you consume resources. You know, you eat, you, you know, you require medicine, you know, everybody gets hurt, everybody gets sick, and you eat and you drink. You fucking, that's, you know, you and you take up space, so every time they fucking they move or every time they fucking take up residence, they're going to require space. And you're going to produce waste, you know, garbage, you know, fecal matter, you know, urine, that kind of stuff. Um, so you just have to, you know, your, your positives have to outweigh your negatives in every situation. Otherwise, you're fucking, you're going to bring the group down. And then fucking, you know, you shouldn't, you should not, you know, deem yourself better than anybody else, you know, fucking... You know, why should, why should I survive when I bring down the group, whereas fucking, you know, Jim doesn't bring down the group, you know, fucking, Jim should have my spot in the community because fucking, you know, I mean, obviously, like I said, these are decisions that I can make freely now because it's a fucking, it's an easy hypothetical situation where fucking, where I'm staring at Jim and they're fucking, and my group's just looking at the two of us, like, which one of you stays, obviously, you know, <laughs> that would be a totally different situation because I'd be looking in their eyes just thinking I don't want to die like fucking please don't you know send me away but right now obviously it's just fucking hypothetical so I'm not even really taking it you know seriously but um 
Yeah, I mean, you fucking you have to be able to pull your own weight, and your positives have to outweigh your negatives. And um, I mean, obviously, your positives can be pretty much fucking anything, you know, fucking depending upon how how clear the roads are. If there's somebody's a really good driver, that could be a great positive. Depending upon how bad drivers other people are. I mean, I um like the movie The Stand that I saw. You know, they came, they were, you know, these two dudes who, were, who had to go on bikes because they didn't know how to drive. You know, so fucking when they finally met somebody who could drive, it was fucking, you know, their whole, their whole traveling, you know, changed because fucking they could, you know, like cars can carry a lot more supplies and stuff like that. Cars can carry a lot more people. You know, obviously you can cover a lot more mileage. So having somebody who can drive or something like that, it's a lot better, you know. But then again, if the roads are crowded, you don't want to fucking, you know, maybe driving is not an option. So maybe the fact that somebody can drive is not fucking, you know, such a positive anymore. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously the greatest thing is that fucking, you know, people have to be level-headed. They have to be intelligent, you know, they have to bring something to the group, you know. If you have, you know, friends or family that panic easy, then maybe they're fucking, they're not, you know, they're going to hurt you more than they're going to, you know, help you. You know, I don't, you don't need somebody who you're trying to sneak around a zombie infested fucking building who just fucking screams and panics every time something startles them or fucking zombies get too close because they're going to alert the zombies to you and they're possibly going to, you know, cause the death of the whole group. So, I mean, you need people that are, you know, strong, determined, level-headed. And I mean, fucking, obviously, you know, you can't determine that just by looking at people. That's something that you have to get to know over time, and you have to fucking, you know, see how it works initially. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to, you know, fucking... If somebody knocks at my door and says, hey, can I take shelter with you guys? I'm not just going to look them up and, look them up and down and just be like, no, you're fucking... You know, you're too skinny. You don't look like you can do much. Fucking, you're gone. Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, we don't want you. You know. Like, I... I remember there was, um, in the movie, like, The Stand, which is one of my fucking biggest resources for this kind of type of thinking. There was this girl that they came across, um... She was fucking, she was, you know, she was young. She was, you know, physically fit. And the initial, you know, guy was like, the leader was just like, you know, she looks like a good, she looks like she could help us out. And then it turned out that she was, you know, negative and she was fucking, you know, distrustful and childish and immature. And then he was just like, fucking, you know, we don't need her. Like, fucking, we don't want her because she's, she might be, you know, young, physically fit and she looks like she can take care of herself. But, you know, she's fucking, she has bad qualities that hurt the group. And, you know, fucking... She, her negatives outweigh her positives. And so then they fucking just left her behind. And so, I mean, so it all depends upon the situation. You know, you can't look somebody up and down and say good or, or fucking negative, you know. Obviously, if fucking, you know, <laughs> somebody's fucking, you know, in a rocker, shit like that, you know, or, you know, with a walker or shit like that, you know, you might be able to say, like, dude, I can't, I'm sorry, like, fucking, you know, we're about to clear out of here and we need to do it in a hurry, like, we fucking, we can't, you know, somebody can't carry you when we need to run. We need those people to carry fucking food and shit like that. So maybe that's an example or something like that. And unfortunately, you know, people, <laughs> one of my friends has a kid, so of course she's going to get heated at me for saying this, but, you know, Kids are obviously the future of the gen, you know, the future of the, the world. So, you know, they, if we as a species want to survive, they're obviously very important to us. But kids can also be a fucking pain in the ass, especially to transport, you know, keeping quiet. They consume resources without pulling their own weight. Um, you know, I was watching this, you know, this... Vietnam show one time and fucking they, they had this baby that they had to transport and of course they're fucking they're hunkered behind enemy lines the fucking the enemies are crossing right in front of them and the baby just starts what just starts fucking wailing 
because the baby has no idea they're fucking they're gonna get shot if they're discovered. The baby's just fucking cold or hungry or, or fucking wet or something like that. And so they're of course trying to keep the baby quiet without, you know, fucking smothering the kid. And it just turned into this whole fucking thing where, you know, the baby was just being a baby, but the baby almost fucking killed the group. And that's the scenario with children. I mean, fucking children are, like I said, they're the future of the group. But, you know, they need to be kept fucking back and they need to be kept protected. And sometimes that's not always an option. You know, fucking maybe, maybe unfortunately you might have to leave this series of babies behind, you know, fucking, and then have babies once you start a new community. Because, you know, you can't care for these babies at the moment. You know, it's a very, very tough decision, especially when people are parents of these kids. They might refuse to come along, and you might have to be like, look, then we have to leave you. You know, I can't take your fucking four kids because they're going to eat, you know, four, their four mouths to feed, whereas we're barely struggling to survive as is. You know, I can't afford to have four people who don't work, you know, who don't fucking scrounge for food, who don't pull the weight. And so, I don't know, I mean, these, <laughs> obviously this is not, being a leader of this group, of a group like this, it's not, it's not a fucking, it's not a coveted position, you know, some people want to be the leaders because they can fucking, they think they can call the shots and they want the importance and they want fucking that, you know, that fucking confidence that, you know, like fucking, I'm the smartest of the group, I'm the best of the group, you know, you know, I want people to defer to me to, when I, you know, to, and I won't think I should make the decisions. But I'm fucking, this is purely hypothetical in my mind, but still it has great impact on me. It must be fucking rough as hell to just look at people and be like, no, we can't help you. Get out of here. Just fucking stare people in the face and sentence them to death. You know, you're obviously not pulling a trigger, but you're just telling them, no, you can't be part of our community. You're on your own, which could, which very likely will lead to their death. So obviously, fucking, you're going to have to make tough calls, you know, fucking somebody gets bitten, you know, they still tell you that they can keep up, you know, that they're not going to turn. You got to be like, look, dude, you're out of the group, fucking, you know, we can't take that chance, you know. So it's not, it's not a coveted position. You have to be fucking cutthroat. You have to be fucking harsh. And you, have, you have to always weigh the group's survival over anything, including your own survival. You know, if you fucking... If you want to go check on your, you know, your wife and kids, but you know that it's going to endanger, you know, your group, maybe you have to just fucking say, look, I can't, I can't put my own family above that of the group, you know, fucking, maybe my wife and kids, they might still be alive, but I've got fucking 20 people here and we need them if we want to fucking, you know, restart the world or if we want to create some community. You might have to get them fucking to a place of safety and, you know, started before you can go check on your own family. So it's not a fucking coveted position. I mean, anybody that thinks so just wants to be boss and they just want to fucking, you know, they just think that they have the best ideas, the most common sense, and they're, you know, primed for the position. But, I mean, it's not, you know, <laughs> it's not a fucking coveted position. So you do... When the group picks a leader, they do have to pick somebody who, you know, will fill the role that the, the fucking, you know, the, the position requires. You know, you need somebody who, who will be a good leader, but who's also going to stand fast and be able to make those tough fucking, those really motherfucking tough calls and who fucking won't balk at that kind of shit. Um, so, I mean, this is only the first... I've decided that I want to start doing videos on what if situations and you know maybe fucking maybe I might you know extend this premise a little bit further on so, <laughs> so who knows what um, my my next videos might entail but I mean I enjoyed you know this initial premise I liked the um, the video request and so you know maybe I'll extend it along because I haven't covered half of what I haven't even covered like fucking where we should, you know, where we can get supplies, you know, fucking, you know, the best places to go. You know, I think, <laughs> I think the friend who requested it wanted me to just like, you know, fucking, we go to Target and then we <laughs> can go to, go to here to pick up pizzas and fucking, then we go fucking, you know, 
we go to the drugstore and we fucking, you know, because I don't think she expected, you know, or maybe even wanted as much, you know, deep hypothetical thinking as I'm putting forth in such, you know, <laughs> such an abstract premise. But, you know, this is shit that I have thought about. Not because I really think that fucking the world is going to end or there's going to be some kind of a zombie invasion. But, you know, I fucking, I idolize kind of the leadership position that I've described. Not because I want that, you know, I don't want compassion. And I want to fucking, I want to be prepared for, you know, making life or death decisions. But I just want to be that person, you know, that person with determination, that, you know, person able to stand fast, make, you know, good decisions, you know, use common sense, you know, do what's right for everybody, even if at the, you know, even if it doesn't benefit themselves. Because I think that's, you know, that's the definition of a true leader and a, or a true manager of fucking, you know, a community of people and shit like that, you know, that's, those are the people that fucking, you know, those are natural leaders, you know, those are the people that fucking, you know, in a, a normal group of friends, people go up and say like, hey, Bob, you know, what should we do, you know, fucking, you know, the car broke down, like, fucking on our road trip, like, what should we do now, Bob, and Bob's just fucking, Bob's just like, you know, fucking, we should do this, and we should do that, and people just, people defer to him naturally, because it's a natural, you know, he exudes the natural leadership position. Or maybe fucking she exudes the natural leadership position. It's not specifically a male or female or a male role. It can also be female. You know, there are a lot of fucking there are a lot of fucking women in, you know, high power roles who fucking do fine or do great. So I'm not gonna say it's fucking it's a male or female role because, you know, fucking it just depends upon the person, you know. So maybe there are fucking, you know, 20 dudes who are fucking, 20 dudes in the army who would be fucking great for it. But maybe, you know, all 20 of them die and it turns out that what we've got left is fucking some, you know, some lowly second lieutenant, you know. <laughs> you just have to make do with what you have in a situation like this. It all comes down to whoever survives, you know. You have to, you have to pick the best from what you can't, what you have. You know, like I said, you might want fucking, you might want, it'd be great if one of those fucking generals survived and they're fucking, because maybe they have better experience and they're, you know, a better, you know, leader than fucking the lowly second lieutenant, but maybe they all, fuck, like I said, you can't, if the second lieutenant is all you have, then that's all you fucking have. Um, anyways, this concludes at least... Maybe the first part, or maybe my, you know, my hypothetical situation altogether, but, um, anyways, thanks for listening, this one was almost pretty much a fucking hour, <laughs> so, um, if anybody wants me to continue, please message me, if not, then I'm glad you listened to my, my thoughts, um, anyways, stay classy, you know how to reach me if you want, thanks.